It's no secret that furries are a colorful bunch. Even though we all have characters that are anthropomorphic versions of real animals, the first thing that almost all of us change when designing our specific persona is the color of the fur, or feathers, or scales, or whatever. And it makes sense why furries do this, because if they didn't, every wolf or every tiger or every bear would end up looking kind of the same. This makes choosing what color you want your persona to be a pretty important decision. Thankfully, you're not starved for choice. There are many colors to choose from that you can add to the design of your persona. But if you take a step back and look at all the other furry characters that are out there, there is one color in particular that you're going to end up seeing more often than others. And that color is blue. But why blue? Why do so many furries end up with blue fursonas? Well, that's what we're going to explain today. We're going to take a look at why blue is so common in the furry fandom, why furries end up choosing it so frequently, and why, despite its popularity, choosing it for your next persona still might be the best decision for you. As we get going here, I do want to reiterate that choosing the color that your persona is going to be is actually a really important decision, one that's a lot bigger than you might think. The color or patterns of colors that you choose for your persona provide the biggest opportunity that you have to make that persona as unique as possible. In fact, I would go as far as to say that it's more important of a decision to make than choosing what species your persona might be. I mean, just think about it. Think about how many wolves there are in this fandom. Blue wolves specifically, but we'll get to that part in a second. All of those personas are technically the same species, but what really separates them from each other and makes them visually unique is the color of their fur. But just looking different isn't the only thing that choosing the color of your persona determines. It also determines things like how stripes or spots or other fur patterns show up in the art of your sona that you commission. Or if you decide to get a fursuit of your persona one day, the primary color of your fur makes a huge difference in how easily your suit gets dirty or even how well it will look in pictures that are taken of it. Places like convention centers and hotels don't always have the best lighting. And when there's not a lot of lighting, all cameras, no matter how professional they are, will have to work harder to keep certain colors exposed properly. This might result in a grainier image or the colors themselves not looking like they do in person. And uh, trust me on this one, I would know. It takes a lot of light to make me look good. But let's get back to the main question here. Despite how important choosing the colors for your persona is, if you take a look around the fandom, you're going to see a lot of personas that have blue incorporated in their design. It doesn't matter what the species of that sona is or what patterns or features that they have that are visible, you don't have to look very long to realize that this fandom's favorite color is definitely blue. And despite furries taking on fictional fursonas that are based on anthropomorphic animals, the reason why you see so many blue fursonas is actually quite human. You see, humans, like you and I, are naturally attracted to bluish hues. When we see something that is blue, there is something in our brain chemistry that gives us a sense of calmness and relaxation. And we make that connection so naturally because a lot of the things that we see and experience in our everyday lives that also give us those relaxing feelings just so happen to be blue as well. Take water, for example. We all need clean water to live, and even though it's technically clear, if you were to ask the average person to describe clean water, they would probably describe the color of water itself to be a light sapphire hue of blue. Even in cases where water is used for recreation, like at the beach, many people are more attracted to coastal destinations that are known for their deep, cerulean-colored water. Another example of this is the sky. The classic blue sky is something that we tend to have positive feelings for. Usually, when the sky is clear and sunny, we really enjoy the feeling of being able to go outside and are more inclined to actually get out of the house because of it. And this isn't just a Western thing either. This idea can be seen all around the world. Of course, there are some cultural differences here and there, but no matter where you go on this planet, clean water and a clear sky are usually things that people have positive feelings towards. But that only tells 
half of the story. There's another big reason why furries in particular love making their personas blue in some way. And this reason is also very human. In fact, arguably more human than the last one. As much as we like to say we don't, humans have a tendency to do what everyone else is doing. Now, there are good historical reasons for this. We are all here today because our ancestors followed the leader that led them to food, not becoming someone else's food. But even today, we as a people have a natural inclination to go with whatever the most popular thing is in any given setting. And again, this isn't always a bad thing. This can be especially helpful if we're new to something, where if we see someone who we perceive as more educated in something that we are interested in, we'll want to do what they're doing. Or we may just want to avoid looking foolish in front of people whom we want to associate with, which isn't inherently a bad thing to want to avoid. This is called the bandwagon effect, and it's something that we see all the time in our everyday lives, from fashion trends to diets to even elections. And as you might have guessed, this is experienced in the furry fandom as well. When new furries join the fandom and get to making their personas, they want to strike that balance of making something unique that is true to who they are, but also making something that everyone already in the fandom would think looks cool too. So when looking at examples of designs for inspiration, they're going to end up seeing a lot of blue personas. This leads them to associate blue personas with good personas, or at least ones that other people like in the fandom, no matter if that's actually true or not. So in order to also fit into that good category, many of them end up choosing blue for the primary color of their personas, which adds to the number of blue sonas in this fandom that the next new furry sees and associates with good personas, and the cycle continues. This is why there's this meme in the fandom that all new furries choose blue wolves for their personas. And we find it funny because it's kind of true. At least the blue part of it is. Whether the fandom intended it or not, it almost naturally ended up with a lot of blue sonas due to a combination of furries wanting to fit in with one another and the simple fact that a lot of people like the color blue. Wait, 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 hang on. If the whole point of making a fursona is to make something as unique as possible, doesn't wanting to add blue to the design of a new sona go against that entire idea? Well, no. Making your fursona blue does not invalidate its uniqueness in any way. Feel free to breathe a sigh of relief. The whole point of making a fursona is to create some kind of persona that represents something or everything about you. This persona just so happens to take the form of an anthropomorphic animal. And if you happen to like blue and want to make it a part of your persona's design, it's perfectly okay to do so. That's really the whole point of making a persona. It's all about representing you. And even then, there are still lots of ways to make your persona unique while still adding the fandom's favorite color into the mix. You can add a cool pattern that breaks up the blue into a few different shades. You can add a second complementary color into the design that creates a unique combination. Or you could do something as simple as making blue a big part of your sona's lore, giving the reason for choosing it as the primary color of your character some extra meaning. The point is that if you are still thinking about the design or redesign of your persona and hesitant about adding blue to it because it's so popular, there's really no need to be. It's a good color and it's popular for a reason. And in this case, fitting into the norm really isn't that big of a deal because at least when it comes to personas, the norm really isn't a thing. Your persona should be created in a way that represents you and how you want to be seen in this fandom. And no matter how generic you think your design is, as long as you're not outright copying someone else, your Sona will still be a unique addition to this fandom. So if you like blue, there's no reason why your persona can't like it as well. And that's all there is to it. Thank you for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. But until then, stay wild out there. Peace. All right, first video done, only up from here.